So when I was 19 years old, I had a season of my life where I was, I was experiencing severe illness, severe sickness. I don't know if maybe you've heard this story before or not. I was so sick that I was in and out of the hospital almost every day. I had so many blood tests and uh, IVs in my arms that I had track marks on my arms. I learned that I had a disease called celiac sprues disease. And in that time, it was kind of a rare diagnosis. It was before gluten intolerant was sexy, <laughs> right? Now everybody does it just for fun. They, they go gluten free. Uh, but this was in a time uh, between when I was 19 to 25 that there was not health food stores that had Amy's blueberry muffins and, and those sort of things. Like, I, I had to go buy a bread machine and make my own bread out of like rice flour and tapioca flour, and, and it was just disgusting. It was just not good stuff. I was so sick um, with this disease that I, I couldn't hold any body weight. Um, it, uh, gluten is a wheat protein and my body would just pass it, it, so I didn't have, anyway, it would just make me really, really sick. Found out that I had a, a dual high natal hernia in my esophagus that they wanted to go in, cut out, you know, fuse my esophagus and all that. I, I never did have the surgery. But I am not unfamiliar with desiring to be healed. Today, we're going to talk about healing. We're going to talk about the topic of healing today. And for me... Keeping my body healthy, keeping my weight under control has been a struggle for me my whole life, okay? So I'm going to be very transparent with you today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach from an area of me too, not I have arrived, so get yourself in shape. I believe that I have such a desire to eat everything today because of the amount of years I went with not being able to eat what I wanted. And so for me, when that gets out of control, I put on body weight. When I put on body weight, it presses on my stomach, which then causes all sorts of digestive issues again, okay? So today's topic is healing. And I wanna look at a very popular story in, a bi in the Bible of a lady who was on the search for healing. She was on the search to be made well. And the, and the story is in Mark 5, verse 25. It'll be up on the screen behind me, and it says this. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, th men, men don't bleed this way, okay? So that's the kind of, it's a, it's a feminine issue that this is about. And there was there a woman... Jesus is in a crowd of people. He's walking from town and village, healing all who are sick and oppressed of the devil. She had been suffering a great deal under the care of many doctors. I can understand that. I had three different GI doctors. I've had all different types of GI scopes, one end and the other end, and, and try to find out what's going on. I, I know what this is. Watch, she went to the many care doctors and had spent all she had, she spent all her money. So Jesus wasn't her first visit. He's kind of the last resort. She spent everything she had. She went to every doctor. She spent everything. And you know, medical bills are expensive. Prescri prescriptions are expensive, right? I mean, your copay covers a certain amount, but I, I met someone the other day, and they said after their copay, their monthly prescriptions are $1,000 a month, all the medicines that they're on. I, that's kind of what's happening here. And instead of getting better, she grew worse, right? So uh, when, when I was sick, I, I began to get ulcerated inside, so they put you on a bland diet where you're eating bread, bananas, and whatever, right? But the bread that they put me on was the thing making me sick, right? And so instead of getting better under the doctor's care, I was growing worse. And this is what's happening here. When she, verse 27 says this, when she heard about Jesus, 
when she heard about Jesus, when she heard that there was hope, when, when, when she heard that there was this guy going from town to town healing people, when she heard, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she said to herself, verse 28, if I just touch him, I will be healed. And I love this. I, I bolded it. I will be healed. She didn't say, if I touch him, I hope something happens. If I get around him, I really hope he sees me. And if we have eye contact, we have this moment, then I know that maybe I might be okay. Because I want it really, really bad, but I'm not sure that he'll give it to me. She says, I will. There was no doubt in this statement that she made. If I touch him, I will be healed. Watch this, 29, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. Now, this wasn't a power outage, right? This wasn't like, whoop, she drained it all. He just felt something draw. He felt a draw. He turned around and asked the crowd, who touched my clothes? Yo, who touched my new kicks? Who stepped on my sneakers? Right, like, whoa, who touched me? And the disciples said to him, you see the crowd against you? And yet you ask who touched me? Now this is the new, this is the NIV. The King James Version, I love how it says, how saith thou who touched thee? How are you going to ask who? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's touching you. But Jesus kept looking around. And I love this. She first came looking for him. Now he's looking for her. She came looking for him. And now he's looking for her. Who touched me? Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. We're going to come back to why she was trembling in fear a little bit later. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Because there was no power in his clothes. His clothes didn't heal her, right? Her faith, that if she touched him, your faith made you whole. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. So the first thing that I want to show you this and point this out was Jesus was not the one seeking originally, right? One, Jesus was not the one seeking. And two, originally, at the beginning of this story, she wasn't seeking Jesus. She was seeking to get made better. Originally, she went to every doctor, so she wasn't seeking Jesus. She went to every doctor, got a second opinion, a third opinion, a fourth opinion. She spent all she had, so originally she was not looking for Jesus. She was looking that her symptoms might subside. And isn't that where we find ourselves today? It's, it's really easy to take medicine to mask symptoms instead of finding full healing. And really, and I'm not trying to talk about any conspiracies or anything, but really the medical field, they don't want you better. They want you on your medicine. Because that makes more money. And more money, more money, more money. So, so what medicine does, I don't know if you know this, but all medicine does is it tells your brain Stop thinking about that. It just tells your brain. It just numbs one part of your brain. It says, okay, now your elbow's not going to hurt. The injury is still there. The inflammation and problem is still there, but I just don't feel it. Right? And that's what she was looking for. And, and as humans, we, we look at all different places to numb pain. Huh? Some people try to numb pain with relationships. Some people try to numb pain with a bottle. Some people try to numb pain with doing like adrenaline junkie uh, events, jumping out of planes, whatever. I just, I just don't want to feel this pain. Now, they're not really looking to be healed. Just, I just want to get through today. She spent all she had, and in fact, if it were today, she'd be in hundreds of thousands of dollars of credit card debt. 
There wasn't credit cards back then. But if she was in this day and age, she would have spent, she would have put everything on credit too. So not only would she have spent all she had, she would have also spent what she didn't have. Come on. But she heard some good news. She heard some good news. She heard that there was this guy named Jesus who was healing people for free. And she was like, yo, I can afford that. I can afford that if it's free, it's for me. Amen. Let me go. For, now, she didn't know. She didn't know who this guy was. She didn't know what color his skin was. Uh, what? She didn't know what his socioeconomic background was. She didn't know if he was good looking or not, short hair or bald. She knew nothing. All she knew was that there was this guy healing people. And if I touch him, I'll be healed too. Because we do this, right? We do the same thing. She goes, well, if he healed them, he'll heal me because I'm not as bad as them. If he was willing to heal that person, he'll heal me because I'm not as bad as them. Come on. Don't we do that? Yeah, we do. I don't because I'm perfect. But other people do. When she heard that people were being healed, <laughs> faith rose in her heart. This is why we share our stories. This is why back in old church, they called it testimony night. Testimony night, right? Where you would get up and you would tell the congregation something good that had happened in your life because of your relationship with Jesus. The best way to evangelize is to tell your story. Why do you believe in Jesus? What is it about God that makes you put your faith in him? And that's, that's all that was happening. People were like, yo, my knee was like this, and I went in, this dude, Jesus slapped me on the knee, pow, it went like this, and I'm good. And she's like, well, if he healed that knee, he could heal me, right? And the truth of the matter is, even if you didn't believe that guy, that his knee was like that and now it's not, he believed, he knows, he knows how he felt walking in and how he felt walking out and that he was different and there's nothing anybody can tell him. And the confidence in that story is what gets other people to have faith in their hearts. With the sort of condition that this lady had, she was not allowed to be out in public. She was not allowed to be out in the crowd of people. She would had to have left her home and go to a building for unclean time, for unclean week, and then go through a purification process, a cleansing process, and then she could come back into society time. Well, hers was an ongoing ailment. She would not have been able to ever been out in public. So this is why when Jesus says, who did it? And it's her, she's in fear and tremor because she's not supposed to be in a crowd. She's not supposed to be in public. In fact, if there was an emergency in which she had to be in public, as she walked through the crowd, she would have to yell, unclean, unclean, so that everybody knew, back up, because if I touch you while you're unclean, I would become unclean as well. And I would have to go through a ceremonial cleansing. But she didn't cry out. She didn't shout out. She didn't have confidence that way. Instead, she hid in the crowd and she hunted her healing. If Jesus moved to the right in the crowd, she moved to the right. And if Jesus moved back to the left, she moved back to the left. And, and she would, if he went behind the tree, then she would go get there behind the tree. She didn't approach him with confidence because she didn't feel as if she belonged. But at just the right time, she reached out in faith and she grabbed a hold of Jesus. And I believe that this is where we fail 
in the realm of faith. This is where we fail in the realm of faith. Let me give you a little bit of historical background of me. I was raised in the Word of Faith movement, okay, Word of Faith. I went to um, a Bible school with one of the founding fathers of the faith movement, and I mean, we were like name it and claim it, right? We were, we're, we were calling uh, things down from heaven, from the north to the south to the east to the west. We, we, were, we were what you would also call holy rollers, right? I was part of the laughing movement. The uh, Holy Spirit came in, we were laughing on the floor, holy rolling, that's, where, that's my background. I wouldn't necessarily call myself word of faith at all today. I wouldn't really associate with that. But my roots are in over-the-top faith, okay? I still believe that way. I still believe in the workings of miracles. I still believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit on earth today. And here is where I've found us fail when it comes to faith. That if you ask somebody, hey, do you have faith to be well? Yes, I have faith. And what they're actually saying is, yes, I really, really, really want to be better really bad. But that's not faith. Faith is not the extreme desire to become well. That's not faith. That's just desire. That's a goal. That's a want. I want to be better so bad. I have faith that I can be better, but that's not faith. That's want. You cannot have faith outside of Jesus. You cannot have faith outside of Jesus. Jesus has to be the end game of the faith. We can't simply hunt for healing. We have to grab a hold of the healer. It can't be just I want to be healed. It's Jesus is my healer. That has to be it. That has to be the point, or it's not faith. All right, l- let me lay this out like this. L- l- let me show you why this story is so important. Some people assume that since Jesus was God, he knew all things, and that he would have already known who touched him. In my personal opinion, when Jesus became man, Although he was fully God, he did not use all of the tools that God could use. Jesus was not omnipotent and omniscient. He he wasn't in all places at all times. He was one man in one place. So literally, when he said, who touched me? He didn't know that Sally, I made up her name because it doesn't say who her name is. Sally touched his garment. He didn't know that. Now, There are other times in the Bible, like if we look at the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well, when he says, oh yeah, you're right, you're not married, and you've also had seven other husbands, right? Well, wasn't that God? No, five. No, Jesus had the Holy Spirit without measure. He was speaking prophetically under the unction of the Holy Spirit, a word of knowledge to know that, okay? But he, he didn't know all things. In fact, in Luke, it says that he had to grow in knowledge and in stature. That he had to grow just like all of us. He was sinless, but he was human. He had to grow. Therefore, watch, when he asked who touched me in his physical being, he did not know who touched him. I don't know if you get where I'm going with this. I had to prove the point there. If this is true, which I believe it is, because I'm never wrong. <laughs> then this next statement is also true. Ready? Here's the big idea today. If you aren't healed, it's not Jesus who hasn't given, it's you who haven't taken. If he didn't know who touched him, then he could not have assessed and said, well, wait a second. I don't think that your lifestyle is one that uh, equates to me healing you today. He didn't know who touched him. She was healed without his... All right. If this is true, then really, she stole her healing. She straight up, New York City, Times Square, pickpocketed Jesus. 
She was in the crowd, and when she got close enough, whoop! And she, yo, who took my wallet? He felt virtue leave him. He felt the pickpocket happen. Who? She didn't. He didn't. He didn't look at her and say, "Well." You don't meet the demographic of the people that I normally heal. Sorry, I can't heal you. He didn't say, you know what? You don't look like the kind of person that deserves my healing. You know what? You smell like cigarettes and stale beer. Not going to heal you. She grabbed a hold of her healing by faith. By faith. Come on, you got to understand this. If you ever think to yourself, well, I kind of deserve where I'm at in life. You know, if, if I, I really, I've made a lot of bad decisions. I don't get this all the time. I want to slap people in the face. I made a lot of bad decisions in my past. Yeah, you did, but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> your, your bad mistakes doesn't negate the power of God. Come on, somebody. As if, as if your bad behavior can undo the cross. As if your bad behavior could put God in a bad mood. How self-righteous to think, how self-righteous to think that your bad behavior could make God upset. As if you're that powerful. As if you're that powerful. He, he had no idea who touched him. It could have been the Pope. It could have been a pauper. Somebody touched him in faith. The woman with the issue of blood hunted the healer. And she grabbed a hold of the power of God. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment and virtue flowed. Without Jesus looking at her and sizing her up to decide whether she was serious enough or not, whether she was holy enough or not, or any other criteria that religion might say, before you come to God, make sure you're cleansed. None of that happened. She, whoop, took her healing. All you have to do is not believe in the healing, but believe in the healer. Let me tell you a story. My dad, my dad is a shopaholic. My dad loves shopping, especially for clothes, okay? So growing up, I knew how to work the Joe McKelvey system, okay? There's always a system. You got you to know how to play your parents, right? And dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry that I'm making this public to you. <laughs> if I ask my dad, hey, dad, I need jeans for school. Could you give me $50? He would give me the $50 for those jeans because he was a good dad and he was a provider. Sure, here you go. Go get your jeans. But I knew how to work the system. If I said, Dad, you want to go to the mall and go shopping? And then maybe we'll go to the food court and get that bourbon chicken at the food court? Come on, somebody, bourbon chicken. Hey! I don't know if that was the Holy Ghost right now or what. I knew that if I did that, Dad, I want to spend time with you. I'd walk out with four, five, six pairs of jeans, matching shirt. See, because what I know is proximity, proximity to the blesser brought about the blessing. My dad would say something like this. He'd be, Ooh, Mike, got to get that shirt. That shirt's saying something. That's what he say. That shirt's saying something. That's a saying something shirt. When I, when I bought this one, I was like, oh, my dad, like, ooh, that's saying something. <laughs> my proximity to him. I want you, dad. I don't just want what you're providing, but I want you to hang out with me. Blessing flowed. Too many times, all we're seeking is the healing and not the healer. She didn't say, I'm going to grab a hold of my healing. She said, I'm going to grab a hold of the healer. 
if I touch him, if I get in proximity to him, I will be made whole. Huh. Maybe you've heard this saying, ignorance is bliss. Well, I just don't know. Ignorance is not bliss. It's just stupid. Huh? The Bible tells us in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed. My people are dying for a lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge. Let, let me throw another one out there to you about communion. Has anybody ever taken communion before in church? In Corinthians, it says this. For this reason, some are sick and have even died, not rightly discerning the body of Christ. And church for decades has taught if you take communion unworthily, if you take communion in a sinful state, see, sick or die. That's not what that is saying at all. It's saying that Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, are living sick and are dying young because they don't understand the power of a healing God. They don't understand the importance of daily communion with God. Hey, let me throw something. Hey, let me give you something today. When you sit down at breakfast, take whatever breakfast product you have and take communion. You don't need to be an ordained minister to do communion. Don't, don't let the Catholic Church lie to you and think that you have to have taken whatever. Yeah, but there's this. Anyway, I'm going I'm to get all nasty real quick. Listen, if you were like me and you couldn't have gluten products so you can't break your bread, break a celery stick. Break a celery stick in half and with your cup of coffee, remember, the body of Jesus Christ was broken for me that I can live in divine healing. Take, the, take a sip of whatever drink you have, orange juice. I remember the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for me that I could have right standing with God every day, every day. I am healed, I am healed, I am healed. Do that communion, then pop your medication and say, I'm not gonna take this medication my whole life. I will be healed. You speak to your situation. Ignorance is not bliss. We're being destroyed because we don't know. We don't know our rights, we don't know our authority as Christians. So here's what we've learned today. Number one, we have to hear the word. She heard of Jesus. We have to hear the word. Are we putting ourselves in positions to hear the word? I know that we've gotten tired of online church and online videos and all that kind of stuff. I, I get that. But we have to be consuming the word of God. Watch this. Romans 10:17 tells us this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to be hearing the word of God. We need to be connected to the power of God. Now, this could be watching online sermons. This could be watching TV, coming to church. Uh, I, would, I would kind of encourage you to read your Bible every day. Maybe it's just a couple verses. Find one verse that speaks to you. Maybe there's something going on in your body. So for me, um, what happens with me is like I have digestive issues or I've struggled with digestive issues. So you can look up scriptures on digestion, scriptures about the stomach, and just Google that. And it will pull up all sorts of scriptures that you can read and believe and quote over your body every day. Here's what happens in my life and here's where my struggle is. I can lose weight like I did now, like I just lost 22 pounds trying to stay healthy, right? But then I start getting a stomach pain. There's this familiar stomach pain up here underneath my rib, certain spot, and when that flares up, my mind says, oh no, here we go again. We're having a flare up. Oh no, right? Come on, this is, this is it don't matter how faith movement I am, I still have a human mind. Here we go again. And there's this little bit of doubt that comes in, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Because if I get sick again, I know this is a couple weeks that I'm gonna be down and I have to start all over again. What did I eat? I, I've been very careful to read all the labels. Did I go somewhere, I had cross-contamination in my food? Like, come on, it's a whole situation. And I create this in my mind, and my mind, and I have to, hey, what does the word say? Is it to remove the devourer for my sake? And it says I would take up any deadly thing and it would by no means harm me. Come on. Guys, this is sometimes the reason why we pray over our meals before we eat. Huh? I got to remind myself to get back. 
What does faith say? What does faith say? What does faith say? And I've got to get some verses that speak to me. Proverbs 4.20, he says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. The word of God is health to your flesh. You need to know what the word of God is saying about your situation and then plug into it. Your blender does you no good on your countertop until it's plugged into the outlet. Plug it in. How many of us have woken up in the morning, our alarm clock didn't go off on our cell phone and we realized either we never plugged it in or the plug fell out of the wall, the phone is dead, now we're late. If, if I need to use this, it has to have power. If I want it to have power, it's got to be plugged in. We've got to stay plugged in to the power of God. Secondly, what did she do? Once she heard, she acted. She did something about what she heard. She heard, yo, there's this guy named Jesus down on Front Street healing a bunch of people. So what'd she do? She got herself down to Front Street. She got herself down there. She said, what? She wasn't like, oh, there's a healer in our town. I'll wait until he comes to my house. And if you pass by, come. But I don't really know if I want to be healed because then I'd have to go off a disability. Sorry. Had to go there. She hunted the healer. She went after the promise of God. Look what, the, look what James, the brother of Jesus, said in James 2.17. In the same way, faith by itself, if it doesn't have action, is dead. So he's saying faith without action is dead. You can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, it's dead. So that's the steps. Hear the word, but faith rise, act upon it. Go grab a hold of the word that applies to your life. And listen, let me, let me just throw something out there because I kind of felt the same way first service. I don't care what your past tells you. I don't care that you tried to have faith before and it didn't work. Do it again. Do it again. Colonel Sanders bankrupt five times, seven times before he got the recipe right. That's KFC. <laughs> I'm talking about food again, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you try again. And then you find your faith recipe. You find your faith recipe. How do I, what does my relationship with God look like? How do I grab a hold of Jesus in faith? What does that look like with me? So maybe it's a, a one-year Bible. Do you know what a one-year Bible is? You can read the entire Bible in one year. It breaks it out for you. Maybe that's what you do in the morning. Maybe it's the devotional that we hand out. And if you'd like one today, we have a bunch of extra ones. Stop by the Welcome Center. Grab that devotional. And every single day, there's like a five-minute devotional that you can read through. If that becomes like, eh, that was okay, but I did it so fast, then go and look up all of the verses that are listed inside of the devotional. You can make it bigger by working on it and, and, and adding to it. But something every single day so that faith is infused into your life and then speak to the situation. She said to herself, if I touch him, I will be healed. Speak to that circumstance in your life and said, it will go out of my life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that those who are seeking after you will find you. They will find their strength in you. I thank you for your healing power flowing through this room today and those watching online, that the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells and abides on the inside of every believer. We thank you today that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Have a great weekend. Thank you.